Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, and good morning. I really love that video. We played it for the first time at the Developers Conference in June, and I wanted to open with it this morning because I think it does such an incredible job of talking about our values. It reflects the unique way that Apple creates what we believe are the very best products in the world. You're gonna see some amazing products this morning that could only have been developed in that unique way. We are really excited to show them to you, but before we dive right in, I've got a few updates beginning with iPhone. As you may have heard, we launched two new designs last month. We launched the amazing iPhone 5C in a range of gorgeous and vibrant colors. Harry McCracken of Time Magazine called it the perfect example of hardware and software integration. And we announced the forward-thinking iPhone 5S with its blazing fast 64-bit A7 chip, a stunning EyeSight camera system, and of course, Touch ID. Walt Mossberg of the Wall Street Journal called it our, called it the best smartphone on the market. And millions of people agreed. By the end of the launch weekend, we had sold nine million iPhones, making it the biggest iPhone launch ever. The excitement and energy around the launch was absolutely palpable, and there was no better place to witness it than in one of our retail stores. We prepared a brief video for you this morning to share that excitement with you, and I'd love to run it for you. I know I can speak for everyone in Apple that when we see customer response like this, it makes all the hard work worthwhile. Both new iPhones shipped with iOS 7, a bold new redesign with great new features and the biggest change to iOS since the original iPhone. The reviews have been tremendous. David Pogue of the New York Times called it some of Apple's best work and millions of customers, hundreds of millions of customers agreed. They loved the bold new redesign and the stunning new features. We made the updates easy and quick to get, and just five days after launch, 
over 200 million devices were running iOS 7. And I'm making it the biggest and fastest software upgrade ever. And I'm pleased to tell you that as of today, nearly two thirds of the devices are running iOS 7. Now this is tremendous, it blows away the other guys. And we love this because it makes, it gives our users the latest software so they can enjoy the greatest features and the best possible experience. One of the great new features that shipped with iOS 7 was iTunes Radio. iTunes Radio is a fun and easy way to discover and explore new music. And it runs on iOS devices, but also in your Mac or PC through iTunes, and even on your Apple TV. Artists love iTunes Radio. Justin Timberlake called it an amazing way to discover new music and debuted his album on iTunes Radio. Now, even more importantly, customers love it. We now have had over 20 million users listen in on iTunes radio, and this number continues to grow. And they've been really active. They've listened to over a billion songs, and this is just in the US in the last month. It's absolutely fantastic. Next up, the App Store. The App Store continues to grow in size and scope. We now have over a million apps on the App Store, and our users have downloaded an astonishing 60 billion times. Now, this is staggering, and the App Store continues to be the best place for developers to be rewarded for their creativity. Developers have now earned over $13 billion. It's hard to imagine your life without these phenomenal apps. It's been an enormous sea change. Next up, the Mac. We have an amazing lineup of desktops and notebooks. And we've had one focus since the beginning, to build the best personal computers in the world, computers that people just love to use. And we've done that through a combination of incredible hardware and beautiful design, coupled with OS X, the world's most advanced desktop operating system, and apps like iWork and iLife, phenomenal apps for your productivity and creativity. And it all, and Max just works seamlessly with all of your iOS devices with iCloud. And all of this comes together in this really delightful experience that our users just love. Now, our competition is different. They're confused. <laughs> they chased after netbooks. Now they're trying to make PCs into tablets and tablets into PCs. Who knows what they will do next? Well, I can't answer that question. But what I can tell you is we have a very clear direction and a very ambitious goal. We still believe deeply in this category and we're not slowing down on our innovation. We've been really hard at work on the Mac and we've got some exciting new products to share with you this morning. To start things off, we'd like to start with OS X and to do so, I'd like to invite Craig Federighi to the stage. Craig? Thank you, Tim. Well, good morning. Well, let's talk about OS X. So the team has been hard at work for, on the latest release of OS X, our 10th release uh, in the history of OS X, and this one is a doozy. We really focused on three major areas in OS X, some core technologies to fundamentally accelerate the performance of your Mac, some features that smooth the Mac experience, and some great new apps. Now, one of our biggest missions with Mavericks was to fundamentally upgrade your hardware, to get more charge out of your battery, to get more out of your memory, and higher performance out of your GPU. Now, while we considered going door to door with a bag of parts, and we would have loved to meet you, uh, we're software guys and actually kind of shy, so we decided to do it with some code. And 
We started with power efficiency and made changes deep and broad across the systems, and the result is outstanding. Now, of course, battery life varies by the model that you choose, but even if you take our 13-inch MacBook Air, the latest, which is, just has fantastic battery life, and all you do is install Mavericks, you'll get up to an hour longer web browsing on a single charge and up to an hour and a half longer watching iTunes video. It's really fantastic. We've also made big improvements with memory. Now, Mac users love to push their systems to the limit. And that's great as long as you have enough memory. But when you start to exhaust the system's free memory, things can slow down. And that's where a new Mavericks feature called compressed memory comes in. With compressed memory, Mavericks can actually compress almost instantaneously inactive parts of your contents of memory, making space for new allocations. This allows us to fit six gigs of data in just four gigs of system RAM. And what this means is you can run more applications and never slow down. Next, graphics. We've made enhancements to the graphics system system-wide, and we focus particularly on integrated graphics. Now, some of our latest Macs include high-performance integrated graphics, where the CPU is combined on the same die with the GPU and sharing the same system memory. Now, in the past, OS X allocated a static amount of memory set aside for graphics, but Mavericks is much smarter. If you're running a task that needs lots of memory but doesn't need much graphics, Mavericks can allocate just a little bit to graphics. But if you're doing something graphics intensive, like playing many streams of high resolution video, Mavericks can give the graphics subsystem everything it needs. And what this means is high performance no matter what you're doing. Finally, we brought OpenCL to integrated graphics. Now, OpenCL takes compute-oriented tasks that would normally run on the CPU and instead takes advantage of the massive parallel compute power of the GPU to make them run much faster. And we see in benchmarks results of up to 1.8x acceleration for these tasks, and sometimes 2x and higher for image processing tasks. It's really fantastic. Now, of course, Mavericks has many great enhancements for your Mac user experience as well. Things like shared links, so in Safari, you can discover new links on the web from people you follow on Twitter and LinkedIn. We've enhanced notifications, so now you can respond in a notification right there while staying in the app that you're already in. In the Finder, we now have tags. It's a great way to organize files no matter where they are, whether on your Mac or an iCloud. And we've made big improvements to our handling for multiple displays, so you can take an app full screen on any display and get at your dock and menu bar, just like it's your primary display, no matter which display you're using. We've also brought some great new apps to the Mac as well. We have a fantastic new Maps app. It's a native app, high performance, multi-touch gestures, turn by or driving uh, directions, and flyover looks great on your big Mac display. We've also brought iBooks to the Mac. You have your whole book library there, and your iBooks textbooks as well. But of course, the best way to appreciate and experience Mavericks is with a, de a demo, excuse me, and I'd like to give one to you right now. All right, let's take a look here at Mavericks. And of course, the Mac has no equal when it comes to a tool for getting projects done. I'm gonna work on a project right here and open up Pages and open up a document for a mission to Mars. And what's really great now in Mavericks is I also have access right here on my Mac to iBooks. So I have my book library here. I can open one of my books. This is a uh, textbook on Mars. Of course, you see these beautiful interactive textbooks. I can just use multi-touch gestures to move between the ch uh, pages of a chapter, just like this. Of course, there are these great interactives. There's a video here I can play. Three, two, one. Make start, zero, and lift off. Atlas Curiosity. It's really, really nice. It's a great way to learn, but it's also a great way to work. So if I have a quote, for instance, that I want to move uh, into a report that I'm writing as a citation, 
I can just click, drag that quote right into my document, just like that. And now it's much easier to organize my content as well with tags. So you see here I have the contents of my documents folder. There's a lot in here, but I've been able to categorize them by topic with tags. So if I want to see all my content related to Mars, I can just access it right here. So I'll drag an image out that I want to add to my document, just like this. That looks pretty good. And tagging your own documents really easy as well. I can just click here on the title bar and add a tag. So you can see I can select from any tags I've already created, like Mars. And I can also tag a single document with multiple tags. So this one also has to do with school. I'll tag it just like that. And you'll notice it appears here under Mars as well as under school. Now, Mavericks is also really great for keeping track of what's going on even when I'm working. So for instance, if a notification comes in like this, let's see. Oh, yep. I can actually respond right here to my wife. Uh, let's see. OK, well, uh, let's see. Uh, Phil is my fashion guru. So you can just respond right there. It's really convenient. Now, we support a new kind of notifications in Mavericks as well, which is website notifications. If I've signed up for a particular site, I can see a notification like this. Here we see Major League Baseball sent me a notification. Let's zoom back out here. You can see I get a story right here. I can read it like this. I have another notification from a, a website. This one for an item I'm following on Gilt. Get a notification that's available. That looks really like just what I need. So <laughs> I, can, uh, I can buy it right now. And what's great is with iCloud Keychain in Mavericks, my passwords are synced across all my devices. So I can log right in without having to remember or type my password. And that also works for entering my payment information. So click here into the card number field. My credit cards are listed. You want to write down that number right now. And along with my expiration date, but you don't have my security code, I have to enter that in manually for extra security. Now, while we're here in Safari, let's take a look at our great new top sites view. And on the left here, you see shared links. So I can click to uh, view an article. Uh, here's a nice one about Apple's uh, new campus. Uh, I, for one, look forward to working in outer space. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I can gesture back right to my list and uh, do searches. So for instance, I can search for stories shared that have Mars in it. I can click in like this. And we have a great new reader view as well. It looks really nice. And as I scroll through the articles with Safari's accelerated scrolling, I can go right from the end of one article right into the next, just continuously. It's really just a fantastic way to read. As you can imagine, this is about a good time for another notification. Uh, here's one right here from my friend Nina, who's just in town, and uh, she wants to apparently uh, meet at uh, Coit Tower. Now, with data detectors, I can actually just click on this and get a view right of the uh, time and appointment. But what's great is when I go into our great new calendar app, you notice it's also extracted the location. It's even shown me a map of that location and the weather expected for that time. And because calendar is completely location aware, it also knows where my previous appointment is, and it can actually let me know how long it'll take to travel from one spot to the other. I can drive or walk, and it looks like it's going to be a nice day, so I'll go ahead and walk. You notice it marks out the travel time right here on my calendar, and I can ask to be alerted on my phone and computer when I need to leave. Now I'm just going to click right into this map, be taken into our great Maps app. So of course we have multi-touch gestures. We see Coit Tower here. I can uh, zoom, I can pan the map around like this. And we have a satellite view with, of course, flyover. And it just looks gorgeous. Looking into the city here, you can see the route that I can travel up to Coit Tower. And when I'm ready to go, I can just go right up here to the share menu and send it to my iPhone where it appears on my lock screen. I can swipe right in to turn by turn directions for my route. So that's a quick demo of Mavericks. So that's Mavericks. It's a fantastic release that extends your battery life, gets more out of your memory, accelerates your graphics, has great features across the system, and some really fun new apps. But you know, for those of us that work on Mavericks, what's most important to us 
is seeing the software in the hands of as many Mac users as possible. We want to get them all the latest technologies, the most innovative features, and the kind of robust security that's only possible through deep infrastructural enhancements. And so in the last, for the last several years, we've been on a mission. We've re-engineered our development process so we can put out regular major releases that renew your Mac all the time. And we've reinvented the way we distribute OS X. So now upgrading your OS is as easy as downloading an app from the Mac App Store. But today, we're going to revolutionize pricing. Because the days of spending hundreds of dollars to get the most out of your computer are gone. Today, we announce a new era for the Mac. Because today, we're announcing that Mavericks is free. Free is good. So we're doing free in not a small way. Whether you have our latest release, Mountain Lion, or even if you never upgraded and you're still running Lion, or if you're a complete laggard and you're still back on Snow Leopard, <laughs> in a single step update, you can get to Mavericks. And we wanted this to run on as many Macs as possible. So whether you have a Mac Mini introduced in 2009 or even an iMac introduced way back in 2007, you're entitled to Mavericks. And again, it's available for free. And the best part, it's available today. Go out and get it. Thank you very much. I'd like to hand it over now to Phil to tell you a little bit about the MacBook. Thanks. Thank you, Craig. Well, good morning, everyone. I have the great pleasure to talk to you about MacBook. The MacBook lineup is the best lineup of notebooks we have ever had. And as you know, this summer at our developer conference, we introduced an entire new generation of MacBook Air. And it's the best we have ever made, faster with incredible all-day battery life. Customers have really fallen in love with them. And the reviewers have been, well, just remarkable. Wired wrote, the 13-inch MacBook Air is as close to perfection as a consumer notebook gets. It doesn't get better than that. Well, unless she wrote this. The greatest laptop ever made. <laughs> or this. Mind blown. <laughs> Imagine it. <laughs> it is safe to say that the MacBook Air may be the best reviewed Mac we have ever made. And today we're happy to now turn our attention to MacBook Pro. As you know, the MacBook Pro it's the first personal computer with a retina display. A display with the pixels so small that at a normal working distance, your eye can't discern them, and the images are gorgeous. And now we've brought out both a 13-inch and a 15-inch retina display MacBook Pro. And both are having major updates today. First, let's start with the 13-inch MacBook Pro. It is an incredible machine, and now it is even lighter, under three and a half pounds, just 3.46 pounds. And the new 13-inch MacBook Pro is thinner as well, just 0.71 inches thin. It's beautiful and thin and light, and it's incredibly fast, too. The new 13-inch MacBook Pro is powered by an Intel Haswell chip. This is a fourth-generation dual-core chip. And that chip includes Intel Iris graphics, integrated graphics that are even faster. In fact, they're up to 90% faster than the previous generation. So faster performance, faster graphics, and it gets better battery life too. Now up to nine hours of battery life for all the things you love to do. Reading your mail, surfing the web, doing productivity, and even watching movies that you've downloaded from iTunes. So if you're a fan of The Black Knight, as I am, you can watch the entire trilogy on one charge. Yes.
you're, if you're a closet Batman fan, you don't have to hide it. It's faster, too, in terms of the flash storage. PCIe-based flash, that's 60% faster than the previous generation. Wi-Fi is faster, too. It has 802.11 AC. That delivers up to three times the performance over 802.11 N at similar distances. And expansion is faster, too. With the new Thunderbolt 2, it's up to twice as fast as the previous generation Thunderbolt. And all this performance and battery life comes in a brand new MacBook Pro that's running Mavericks. Craig just told you all about the incredible features and performance of Mavericks and the work of hardware and software together to deliver an incredible notebook experience. The previous generation 13-inch MacBook Pro started at $14.99. We're really happy to tell you today that this new 13-inch MacBook Pro starts at just $12.99. That's for a configuration with a 13-inch retina display, 2.4 gigahertz, dual core i5, four gigs of memory, iris graphics, and 128 gigabyte of storage. And best of all, it starts shipping today. Next, yep. Thank you. Next, let's talk about the 15-inch MacBook Pro. This all-new generation MacBook Pro is powered by an Intel Crystalwell chip. This is a fourth generation quad core processor. It includes Iris Pro graphics. Now this is integrated graphics that for many tasks deliver the same performance as discrete graphics, but it does it at a quarter less power. And for those who do want discrete graphics, there are models with the new GeForce GT 750M, and this is a graphics part with two gigs of video memory, twice as much as before. So again, faster processing, faster graphics, and longer battery life as well, up to eight hours of battery life. The new 15-inch MacBook Pro also includes the faster PCIe-based flash. It also includes the faster 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. It also includes the new Thunderbolt 2 storage. So it's just better across the entire system. And of course, it comes with OS X Mavericks. Now, the previous generation 15-inch MacBook Pro started at $2199. I think you can guess what's coming. <laughs> the new MacBook Pro now starts at just $19.99. That's for a configuration with a 15-inch retina display, 2 gigahertz quad-core i7, 8 gigs of memory, Iris Pro graphics, and a quarter terabyte of flash storage. And best of all, it's also shipping today. As you know, we work really hard to make all of our products environmentally friendly, and these are both as well. NEG Star 6, EP Gold, arsenic-free display, mercury-free display, BFR-free, PVC-free, and highly recyclable with all that beautiful aluminum and glass. So this is our notebook lineup, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro with a retina display, two display sizes on each, 11-inch and 13 on Air, 13 and 15 on MacBook Pro, starting at just $9.99. So by far, the best lineup we've ever had in incredible upgrades across the whole line. And that's our news for MacBook today. <laughs> Next, we'd like to tell you about Mac Pro. Somebody was hoping we would. <laughs> Mac Pro, as you know, we gave a sneak peek at our developer conference this June, and it's not a stretch to say people have been blown away by this incredible new design. It's anodized aluminum enclosure with diamond cut chamfered edges. So many innovations, like the cooling system that is a single fan. The previous generation had eight fans in it. Or well, the innovation of the unified thermal core at its center. It is a computer that packs an incredible amount of power into something that's one eighth the volume of the previous generation. It's simply remarkable. It is our vision of the future of the Pro Desktop. And today we'd like to tell you even more about it. So inside this new generation Mac Pro is the fastest processor we've ever put in a Mac. A new generation Intel Xeon E5 comes in four, six, eight, or 12 core designs, 30 megabyte L3 caches, super fast buses, a PCI Express Generation 3 bus. 
Inside it is the fastest memory we have ever put in a Mac. 1866 megahertz DDR3 ECC memory on a broad four channel controller, massive bandwidth and up to 64 gigabytes inside. Probably one of the most remarkable things about this machine, the team set a goal to have a breakthrough in graphics. It's the first Mac that comes standard with dual workstation graphics, AMD Fire Pro D300, D500 or D700 graphics. Fast buses, huge amount of VRAM up to 12 gigabytes, over half a terabyte of bandwidth to it, and up to seven teraflops of compute power. That's power that can be used both for graphics as well as for compute intensive tasks using the OpenCL technology that Craig mentioned earlier. Storage inside is all flash based. Simply put, you cannot put a hard drive in anymore that's as fast as this flash. This PCIe based generation of flash is 10 times faster than a hard drive if we put one in. 1.2 gigabyte per second reads, a gigabyte per second writes, up to a terabyte of flash storage. It's an incredible storage system. And if you want to expand it, well, external expansion begins with Thunderbolt 2. You can add expansion chassis, storage arrays, and so much more. It has massive throughput. You can bond them together with channel bonding. You can have up to six, six devices per port. And this is the heart of being able to create a true next generation video work through model with a desktop computer, 4K video, 4K video, 16 times the pixels of 1080p HD video. You can have up to two displays plus a third HDMI display for broadcast monitoring. There's never been a system that can do what the Mac Pro will be able to do for 4K video. Expansion, it has a really cool feature. When you move it, there's a motion controller and the I.O. illuminates to show your way. And there's a lot of great I.O. Dual audio out, four USB 3, six Thunderbolt 2, dual gigabit Ethernet, HDMI, the new generation HDMI, up to 4K, Bluetooth 4.0, 802.11ac. This is packed and built for expansion. Now we have amazing customers and we built this so that they can do things that we can't imagine. And we've been dying to get a few of them and early look at it and their hands on it and so they could tell us all what they think of this new Mac Pro. So I want to tell you about three examples. First, video editing. We have a new generation version of Final Cut Pro 10 designed to take advantage of this new Mac Pro. We put one in the hands of Dean Devlin, filmmaker, you may know of him from Independence Day, The Patriot, and Leverage. He got a chance to use the new Mac Pro and what did he have to say about it? The Mac Pro makes real-time 4K video editing a reality. It's more powerful than I ever imagined and it will change the way I make movies. Photography. A new version of Aperture designed to take advantage of the throughput of this incredible Mac Pro. Put one in the hands of Lucas Gilman. You may know him, this amazing photographer, works for Sports Illustrated, National Geographic. Here's what Lucas had to say. The new Mac Pro cuts my editing time exponentially, giving me more time in the field shooting, which is where I need to be. Last, music. Love this shot. It looks so cool. Who doesn't want to be sitting there next to that? Mac Pro. <laughs> we gave one to Stuart Price, music producer for no one no, no less than Lady Gaga, Madonna, and the Killers. Here's what Stuart had to say about it. The new Mac Pro is blazing fast and shockingly quiet. You have to not hear it to believe it. This is the perfect computer for the recording studio. They seem pretty excited. <laughs> And we can't wait to get this in the hands of more customers so they can show us what they can do with it. So the new Mac Pro will cost $29.99. And that's for configuration with a 3.7 gigahertz quad-core Xeon, 12 gigabytes of ultra-fast DRAM, dual Fire Pro D300s with two gigs of video memory each and a quarter terabyte of high-speed SSD. Now, if you know what D300's costs and that high speed flash, you're actually super impressed with this pricing. <laughs> It'll be available before the end of the year. And like all of our products, we're making it 
environmentally friendly. For a pro desktop, it's Energy Star 6, EP Gold, BFR free, PVC free, and highly recyclable. So recyclable that I'm sure if you don't want one, someone else will die to get their hands on it. <laughs> it's also energy efficient. It's up to 70% less energy consumption than the previous Mac Pro. And this chart proves it. If you look at even sitting at idle, it consumes just 43 watts. Compare that to the previous generation Mac Pro. It's incredibly quiet, too. This is really amazing. The new Mac Pro just puts out 12 decibels at idle. The team hit their goal. They set a goal to make it no louder than a Mac Mini sitting on your desk. That's astonishing for this kind of performance. The Mac Pro is an amazing new generation desktop for pros and all of us. And we're really proud that it's designed by an incredible team at Apple in California. And it's going to be assembled here in the US. In fact, there have been over 2,000 people spread across 20 states helping us to prepare to build this incredible new machine. And it's built with technologies and processes unlike anything we've ever done. And we've created a brief video to give you a peek inside what it's like to create the new Mac Pro. At Apple, manufacturing and design are inextricably linked. To make a product as advanced as the Mac Pro, we had to pioneer entirely new processes. The end result is a computer unlike any we've ever built. It's pretty amazing to see it all come together. So that's the new Mac Pro, and that's our news today for Mac hardware, the all new generation MacBook Pro, and the upcoming Mac Pro. Next, I'd like to turn it over to Eddie Q. Thanks, Phil. It's great to be here this morning to talk about apps. Our apps teams have been busy updating both our creativity and productivity apps, and these are the biggest updates ever. So let's get started with iLife. This is the amazing apps that let you do great things with your movies, your music, and your photos. And we've got brand new versions of iPhoto, iMovie, and GarageBand, all redesigned to take advantage of iOS 7. And we've got brand new versions for the Mac, designed to harness the power of Mavericks. They're all 64-bit, so you get fast performance, and of course, they're integrated with iCloud. Now, we don't have time to go through all of the new features, but I want to highlight just a few. Let's take a look at iPhoto. Browsing your photos has never been faster or smoother than now, thanks to 64 bits. And if you've got iOS, iPhoto has got a brand new look. It's clean, it's beautiful, it's a great way to enjoy your favorite photos and albums. 
Now, photo books have been hugely popular, but they've only been available on the Mac. Well, now we're bringing it to iPad. And with iPhoto, it lays out your book, and with multi-touch, you can easily move your photos around or change the pages to make them look exactly like you want. It then uploads it to Apple, we print it, and we send you a beautiful coffee table book right to your home, and all of this right on your iPad. So a great update to iPhoto for both Mac and iOS. <laughs> and we've got an amazing new version of iMovie with a ton of cool new features. We've completely redesigned it, make it cleaner, simpler for iOS 7, making it easy to browse and share your videos with your family and friends. You don't need to create a project, you don't need to edit, you can just select and tap share. But of course, iMovie lets you take your videos and create incredible movies. And we are bringing desktop class effects that let you speed up or change the speed of the video to picture in picture all on an iPhone or an iPad. On the Mac, we have a new design, makes it even better to browse your library and share your favorite moments. And of course, it's really easy to speed up or slow the video, which is great for the high frame rate video that you capture on your iPhone 5S. <laughs> and we've got a new cool feature called iMovie Theater. And this is like having a private screening room right in iMovie. It takes all of your movies, your trailers, and your shared clips and puts them in a single place for you to see. And because it's integrated with iCloud, when you create a movie on your iPhone, it's automatically available across all of your devices. And of course, even on Apple TV. Next, GarageBand. This is the most popular music creation app in the world. And like iPhoto and iMovie, it's getting an all new look for iOS 7. We're going from eight tracks to 16 tracks. And if you have a 64-bit device, you can now do up to 32 tracks of music. So 32 tracks on an iPhone or iPad, it's incredible. Your favorite album was probably created in 24 tracks. On the Mac, we've got a new look, new design, and a new sound library that gives something for everyone, whether you play the keyboard or need a killer guitar amp. But there's one cool feature that I'd like to show you right now, and I'd like to bring up Xander Zorin up, up, up to show you. Thanks, Eddie. Good morning, everyone. I'm just thrilled to be able to show you the brand new GarageBand. Now, thanks to iCloud support, you can start a song on your Mac or even your iPhone or iPad, and you'll always have access to the latest version. So here we have a little song idea, and it's built around a guitar riff. Why don't we open it up from iCloud, and let's give it a listen. Okay, I think that has some promise. What would make it a lot more exciting is some killer drums. Now, there's a great feature in GarageBand called Drummer, and it gives you a virtual session player that will play along with your songs, but takes your direction. And it's really fun, really easy to use. Uh, to use Drummer, you just go and create a new track. And in addition to all the options you've had before in GarageBand, like your software instruments, audio recordings, guitar amps, now you can create a drummer track. And when I do that, it starts me off with Kyle, along with a set of these performance controls that's going to let me tell and shape Kyle what, you know, what I want him to play. Uh, so the next time I hit the space bar, Kyle's going to start jamming along with the song until I tell him to do something different. So let's check this out. So that's a little tame. Why don't we uh, grab this puck here and increase the, uh, the energy and complexity. Okay, that's more like it. And we can change the drum that he plays on. Let's get him go to the toms. Or have him hit the crash cymbals. We can even crank up the fills for a really big finish. Okay, that's more rock and roll. Sounds way better. Right. Thank you. So you probably notice it sounds incredibly realistic because Drummer is powered by performances of some of the best session players in the world. So these are the same musicians that play with artists like Eric Clapton, Paul McCartney, and Adele. 
And if you ever want a different sound or a different style, you can just try out a different drummer. Now, every new Mac comes with GarageBand and a great set of starter content, including Kyle, and you can add 14 more drummers and a whole bunch of loops and instruments with a single in-app purchase. So what I'll do here is change to uh, alternative, and you can see that we've got Nikki and Aiden. Let's check out Gavin and see what he brings to the song. Brings a whole different approach to the track. So you just play along until you find a, a drum groove that inspires you. So that's just a quick look at Drummer. It's one of the many new features in GarageBand, and musicians are going to love having these great drum grooves to play along with. Thank you. Thanks, you Thanks Xander. Thanks. That was awesome. Uh, I love GarageBand. So Drummer, just one of the hundreds of new features available in the new iLife. So amazing new versions for iOS new versions for the Mac, and best of all, we're making them all free with the purchase of any new Mac or iOS device. And these updates are all available today. So, and that's iLife. We can't wait to see the amazing things that you're going to do with it. Now, our iWorks team has been hard at work at updating all of our productivity apps. Pages, numbers, and keynotes have all been redesigned to take full advantage of iOS 7. And on the Mac, we've completely rewritten them from the ground up. All brand new, the biggest updates of iWork ever. It's going to be great. The first thing is we've got full file compatibility. So now you can open a document on any of your devices or any of your platforms. Full file compatibility in iWork. And because it's 64-bit, it's never been faster. Now, you're also going to notice a brand new UI. And the best part of this is it's easier to do things while at the same time being more powerful. So let's take a look at Pages, for example. So I'm editing a document in Pages. The keyboard comes up. Now I get a new tool across the top that makes it easy for me to tap and just change the format of the text. On the Mac, We've got a new format panel on the right-hand side that's content sensitive. So it shows you the right tool based on what you're doing. So let's say, for example, I select some text. The panel on the side now lets me change the style, the font. If I change and now select an image, the panel switches and now I can change the arrangement, change the border. What's great about this is we're not cluttering the screens with a lot of controls like you see in other apps. We let you focus on the content you're creating. Numbers, we reinvented spreadsheets with numbers and they're getting even better. You can create gorgeous spreadsheets with our free object-based uh, design. And of course, they can have beautiful charts. But what's great is these charts can now be interactive. So you can see how your expenses are changing on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis. So a great update to numbers. Next, Keynote, the gold standard of presentation apps. And we've got some incredible new effects and animations. Some of you may have noticed some this morning because we've actually been running the new keynote in this presentation. We've added object-based animations so that you can do things like this right on an iPhone or iPad. And all of the transitions have been updated with more realistic physics, and we've got new ones. They're great, and best of all, they're even fun. No one lets you do what you can do with Keynote in any other app. And there's one more feature that I'd like to show you, and I'd like to invite Roger Rosner up. Thank you, Eddie. Good morning. Super excited to show you folks the new I work. So imagine I've been working on a poster for Eddie's new album. I'm going to fire up pages here, open up this gorgeous poster. <laughs> We're just getting started. It gets better. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about these apps, they are the most powerful iWork apps we've ever made, but they're also the easiest to use. 
So I can click on an object and you see my format panel, it updates and it gives me just the controls I need for that particular object. We also have styles now for every kind of object. So I can just click there, select some text, choose a style. Really easy to make my document <laughs> look just the way I want. And of course it wouldn't be pages if it didn't have awesome image handling. So I'm just gonna drag in an even better photo. <laughs> you know, Roger, I was gonna wear that shirt today. <laughs> Almost. Another really great feature we have is we've made it super easy to share documents with people. So I can click the share button here in the toolbar and we see a new menu, share link via iCloud. And I'm gonna choose to email. <laughs> And what it's done is created an email message for me and it's just put a link to that document right in the body. I'm gonna send it here to Eddie. And what's really cool is when Eddie gets that link, he can just click on it and the document opens right up in I Work for iCloud beta. He can do it on any computer, a Mac or a PC. He doesn't need pages installed. He doesn't even need an iCloud account. It just opens right up. Super easy to share documents. But let me show you something Super, super cool. I'm gonna move over to Safari here. You know, we introduced these iWork for iCloud beta apps just a few months ago, and millions of people have tried them, and we've just gotten over the, over the charts, off the charts feedback about how great they are. The number one piece of feedback we got in terms of feature requests was collaboration. So, I am really proud to tell you today we are adding collaboration to iWork for iCloud. So I just opened that exact same document in Pages for iCloud, uh, and here I have a share button in the toolbar. It shows he's editing this document. Right now it's just me, but as soon as Eddie clicks that link I sent him, and there he is, now we're both editing the same document at exactly the same time. I think we can definitely improve this, Roger. Uh, <laughs> let's think? go ahead and uh, change the text. I wanna change the, go a little bit more modern here on my name, and uh, We'll switch it down here also. That's looking good, Eddie, but don't you think we ought to use your stage name? <laughs> <laughs> now, Roger, you, you know, I have actually gone back to my uh, third grade stage name. <laughs> and uh, let's go ahead, I, I've got this killer album, and I'm gonna go ahead and name it. All right, well, I have an even better photo than on my computer here, and I'm just gonna drag it in from the finder. <laughs> I'm gonna move this text object up out of the way. What do you think? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. That's the new iWork and the new iWork for iCloud. Thank you very much. Wow is all I can say. <laughs> uh, collaboration, just one of the hundreds of new features available in the new iLife. So now you can create your document on your iPad, edit it on your Mac, and even collaborate with a friend who's stuck on a PC. Now, others would have you spend a small fortune every year just to get their apps. But we wanna do something bold, something that changes the rules of the game, and you know what's coming. We're taking all of these productivity apps and making them available for free with the purchase of Mac and iOS. And of course, you can download them today. So, so brand new versions of iLife, brand new versions of iWork, the biggest updates ever and all free and they're joining the more than 20 Apple apps being updated today for both Mac and iOS. So I hope you can see why today is the biggest day ever for apps. Thank you. Thanks, Eddie. I can't wait to hear the new album. <laughs> These are really incredibly rich apps and we've only scratched the surface at what you can do with them. So I encourage you to check them out. And now they're all 
free with Mac, iPad, or iPhone. Now, when you combine this announcement with the announcement that Craig made earlier that OS X upgrades are free, we are turning the industry on its ear. But this is not why we're doing it. We're doing it because we want our customers to have our latest software and access to the greatest new features. And we think all of our customers, from consumers to educators to enterprise and small business, are going to love this new experience of owning a Mac or an iOS device. Next up, iPad. We launched iPad three and a half years ago with a very clear goal and a very ambitious objective. We called iPad our most advanced technology and a magical and revolutionary device. But not everyone saw it this way. Some didn't see the need for it. Still others didn't think it could compete with a netbook. Who remembers netbooks? Still others doubted it would have any impact on the industry at all. <laughs> but, but we really believed in our vision. And iPad has gone on to become one of the most successful products in Apple's history, and one of the most successful in the industry. And I'm pleased to tell you that earlier this month, we sold our 170 million iPad. This is an incredible number, and I can't think of another product that's come so far so fast. Now everybody seems to be making a tablet. Even some of the doubters are now making them. But regardless of what you might hear or read about how many are bought or sold or activated, iPad is used more than any of the rest. And not just a little more, a lot more. iPad is used over four times more than all of those other tablets put together. And this is what is important to us. Because when you make a great product, with a great experience. This is how you know it. People use it. And what's even more rewarding to us is that people love it. iPad is rated number one in customer satisfaction and has been since the inception of the ratings. And the reason is because iPad combines into an incredible experience hardware, and amazing software and intuitive services into an experience that no one else can match. And iPad has become a great platform for third-party developers. We now have over 475,000 apps on the App Store, and these have been custom designed for iPad, not this stretched out smartphone app that our competitors are doing. No one else is close to this. But it's not about quantity, it's about quality. iPad offers amazing ways for you to be creative or productive or educated or entertained wherever you might go. So when you think about the combination of hardware software services in this incredible selection of apps, it's no wonder that iPad has had such a profound experience in such a short period of time. Tech Pinions called iPad the biggest shift of our generation. But what's most rewarding and inspiring to us is all of the amazing ways our customers are using their iPads. We designed iPad to be the best tool for the things that you do most often. But honestly, we could have never imagined all of the ways 
that our customers would be using them. To celebrate our customers' creativity and genius of using their iPads, we prepared a short video that I'd like to run for you this morning. It's really an amazing video, and each of those scenes has an amazing story behind it. We want to help our customers create even more amazing stories, because we know that this is just the beginning for iPad. And so we've been busy working on the next generation of iPad. And to tell you all about it, I'd like to invite Phil back up on stage. Phil? Thank you, Tim. iPad is delivering a new vision for mobile computing, unlike anything that has come before. And it all began with this amazing 9.7 inch multi-touch display and the incredible power it enabled for software. The ability to hold the internet in your hands as you surf the web and do your email and make FaceTime calls. And over just three and a half years, the team has been on a relentless path every year, updating it with newer and better versions, each delivering further on this incredible vision of mobile computing. It's quite remarkable what they've done. And today we think we have the biggest step yet in delivering the vision that is iPad. I would really love to show it to you right now. iPad, thinner, lighter, more powerful than ever before, and incredibly, excitingly new in so many ways that it deserves a new name. We call it, yes, we call it iPad Air. And it begins with that beautiful 9.7 inch retina display. And as you look closer, you see that the bezel around it is smaller than ever, dramatically so. That's bringing the previous generation in next to it. You can see the bezel is 43% thinner than the previous version, making it more comfortable to hold in your hand. When you look at it from the side, you see how amazingly thin it is. 
Again, that's bringing the previous generation next to it. It's dramatically thinner, just 7.5 millimeters thin. That's 20% thinner across the entire device. Now to make an iPad this thin took a huge amount of work over years. The team has just been remarkable in finding every tenth and every hundredth of a millimeter from every level of the system, from the bezel to the multi-touch surface to the display and battery and enclosure, shaving every hundredth of a millimeter. And the benefits are not only making it thin, but lighter too. The previous iPad weighed 1.4 pounds. The new iPad Air weighs just one pound. That makes it the lightest full-size tablet in the world. The smaller bezel, lighter feel, when you hold it, it will be a dramatically different experience than the previous iPad. In fact, this happens every now and then. We have an Apple product that we introduce where all the words and pictures don't quite do justice to how amazing it is until the moment you pick it up the first time and feel it for yourself. And when you get to do that, you'll understand why we are so excited about this iPad Air. Now what's inside is just as amazing as what's outside. As inside is the brand new Apple A7 chip that we just launched with the iPhone 5S. And it's blown everything away in performance. In fact, Gizmodo wrote, forget the specs, it blows everything away. <laughs> and it does. It's a 64-bit desktop class architecture in the palm of your hands. It's an amazing chip with over a billion transistors. We also included the new M7 motion coprocessor as well. Now this CPU performance is twice the previous generation and the graphics performance is double as well. We've charted that performance over time. You can see from the original iPad, which started with a very fast chip to begin with, as you may recall, and now we're up to eight times faster. Half of that performance coming now with iPad Air. And graphics performance, look at this increase, 72 times faster than the original iPad. Again, half of that coming with the new iPad Air. And you're gonna feel that across so many of the things you use. Playing games, a two-fold increase, the ability to do great 3D rendering. Professional applications, we're opening large files and doing complex operations can be up to twice as fast. This is a screaming fast iPad. It's faster at Wi-Fi too. For the first time, we use MIMO technology in an iPad. That gives multiple antennas so you can get up to twice as fast 802N performance as before. We've also ex expanded the ability to have broadband wireless access in more places around the world with expanded LTE coverage with more and more carriers. And throughout the entire product, there's all the things that make a great iPad experience. A five megapixel EyeSight camera that also captures HD video. The new front-facing FaceTime camera with better low light illumination. And for the first time, dual microphones for better audio capture, as well as Siri, voice recognition. All this performance, this thinner and lighter design, and it still delivers amazing all-day, 10-hour battery life that our customers love. The new iPad Air comes in silver and white, and space gray and black. And like all of our products, it's made incredibly environmentally friendly. The new iPad Air will replace our top of the line full-size iPad start at the same, just $499 for 16 gig Wi-Fi config and with cellular technology, $629. Now we have an iPad 2, it's available at $399. We're gonna keep that there because there are a lot of customers that like getting access to a full-size iPad at just $399. So this is our full-size lineup, iPad 2 at $399, iPad Air at $499 iPad Air will start shipping very shortly, November 1st, in a huge list of countries around the world. You'll notice one country for the first time on our, on our, on our Wave 1 list, China, will get the new iPad Air with Wi-Fi right at the start with the rest of these countries. This is our probably biggest leap forward ever in a full-size iPad. And we have a video to tell you a little bit more about it. We're often faced with a paradox when we design. 
to make products smaller and lighter, while at the same time more powerful. The more we reduce a product's physical volume, the more difficult it becomes to increase its power and maintain its battery life. But if we can overcome these challenges, we can make something without compromise. iPad Air is just 7.5 millimeters thin and weighs only one pound. We actually started work on this product years ago, designing and engineering the primary technologies that would be necessary to make it. The new A7 chip is incredibly powerful and also very power efficient. Because of this efficiency, the battery could get smaller, yet critically without any loss in battery life. And of course, by reducing the battery size, the product became significantly lighter. We reduced the dimensions of the bezel. With less mass, the iPad Air still retains its structural rigidity. There's a simplicity to it, but there's nothing precious about it. This integrity, this durability, inspires confidence in a product that's meant to be taken places, handled, and really used. With the iPad, we set out to redefine mobile computing. Up until now, 64-bit architecture was something you'd normally only find in desktop computers. The new, Apple-designed A7 chip brings 64-bit technology, all of its advanced computing and graphics, to this ultra-portable one-pound device. But even with all of this added processing power, iPad Air still has an impressive 10-hour battery life. iPad Air is the first iOS device to support MIMO, or multiple in, multiple out. It actually delivers twice the data transfer rate as the previous generation. And there's support for more LTE bands than on any other tablet. Because with a device this thin and powerful, you'll want to take it anywhere and always stay connected. We've also improved the FaceTime and iSight cameras, adding new processors and sensors, so you get much clearer, sharper images and video. iOS 7 is essential to the iPad experience. It's at the core of everything you do with iPad Air. And we're now making iMovie, iPhoto, GarageBand, Keynote, Pages, and Numbers available for free. Because we believe that with these amazing apps on this amazing device, possibilities of what you can create are limitless. The iPad has always been a tool defined by the ways people actually use it. The iPad Air is so capable and powerful, and yet with its breakthrough size and weight, it's the thinnest, lightest, and also the most advanced iPad we've ever built. So this is the all-new generation iPad Air. Next, let's talk about iPad Mini. iPad Mini has been a big hit with customers because it delivers the complete iPad experience in an even smaller design, 7.9 inch. It lets you do all the things that you love to do with iPad. You surf the web, do your email, make FaceTime calls, read books, watch movies, and use all those hundreds of thousands of applications. Customers love the complete iPad experience the iPad Mini delivers. And the one most requested feature to add to iPad Mini is a beautiful retina display. And that's what we're going to do today. It's a 7.9 inch retina display that's 2048 by 1536 pixels, the same number of pixels as an iPad Air. So it runs all the same software. When you use it for everything you do, from looking at photos, where the pixels are so small that you can't see the individual ones at a normal distance, or text as sharp as the finest printed newspaper or magazine, the experience is just amazing. And the new iPad mini with retina display is also powered by this brand new A7 chip with its 64-bit architecture. This delivers a huge jump in performance for iPad mini, up to four times faster at CPU tasks and up to eight times faster at graphics tasks. You're gonna feel performance across everything you do that's so fast. And still that great all day, 10 hour battery life. The iPad mini with retina display also gets 
the new two times faster Wi-Fi with MIMO antennas. It gets the expanded LTE support for more carriers around the world. It has everything you love about iPad, a five megapixel iSight camera, the new FaceTime HD camera. It comes in silver and white and space gray and black. And the new iPad mini with retina display will be priced at just $399. That's for 16 gigs with Wi-Fi and $529 with cellular technology. It'll be available later in November. And we're going to keep the original iPad mini in the line as well, because as you know, it starts at just $329. But what we're going to do is at the same time lower the price of that iPad mini to just $299. So that's the lowest price yet for an iPad giving you a full iPad experience for under $300. And so here's what our lineup will look like going into the holidays. You'll have iPad mini starting at $299, iPad mini with retina display at $399, a full-size iPad 2 at $399, and the brand new iPad Air at $499. Just an incredible lineup unlike anyone else has in the industry, something amazing at every price point. Now, in addition to that, customers love protecting their iPad with covers and cases. So we have new ones of those, too. We have a brand new iPad cover made of polyurethane. It works for both the iPad mini and the new iPad Air. It comes in these beautiful colors for just $39 each. And there's the iPad case that protects the front and the back with a beautiful leather case in these amazing colors. It's $79 on iPad Air and just $69 for iPad mini. And both the cover and the case come in gorgeous product red versions as well. So that is the new iPad mini with its retina display and the all new generation iPad Air. Now let me turn it back to Tim. Thanks, Phil. It's been an incredible period for innovation and new products. Just in the last few weeks, we've had our largest iPhone launch ever with the colorful iPhone 5C and the forward-thinking iPhone 5S. These are the best smartphones on the market. And we launched iOS 7, the biggest change to iOS since the original iPhone with its bold new design and great new features. And just today, the new MacBook Pros with stunning retina displays and incredible battery performance. And the Mac Pro, jaw-dropping, radical. It's the most powerful Mac we've ever shipped and the future of our Pro desktop. And of course, all of our Macs have run with OS X Mavericks, the most advanced desktop operating system we also announced new versions of iWork and iLife for both OS X and iOS. And we couldn't be prouder of both new iPads. The iPad mini with retina display and the incredible thin and light iPad Air. We're so excited about the new iPads that we've made a cool new ad that I'd like to run for you now on the iPad Air. It's an extremely simple tool, but also extremely powerful. It can be used to start a poem or finish a symphony. It has transformed the way we work, learn, create, share. It's used to illustrate things, solve things, and think of new things. It's used by scientists and artists scholars and students. It's been to classrooms, boardrooms, expeditions, even to space. And we can't wait to see where you'll take it next. Introducing the thinner, lighter, more powerful iPad Air.
These amazing products are great examples of the type of innovation that only Apple could deliver. This is what we mean by designed by Apple in California. Other companies would be incredibly proud to just have one of these products. But we couldn't be more pleased to be able to present all of them to you in time for the holidays. I'd like to thank all of the people at Apple that work so hard in bringing all of these products to life. It's a privilege of a lifetime where work alongside of all of these folks. We have a hands-on area for the press, and I would encourage you to get your hands on these products. They're fabulous. Thank you for joining us.